So this is Hitachi Seaside Park, and this is also Hitachi Seaside Park. About two hours transit from Tokyo, this is a perfect day trip if you're looking for a stunning nature expanse that showcases and celebrates seasonal beauty. And in this video, we'll cover what makes this spot special, exactly how to get there, and some practical tips to enhance your experience when you go. So this park is most famous for these stunning seasonal displays, which we'll showcase in depth in a moment. But it's also much more than that. What makes Hitachi Seaside Park special is its commitment to showcasing the natural beauty of Japan's flora in a meticulously maintained environment. The park is designed with careful attention to harmony and aesthetics, creating an ideal setting for those seeking a serene yet dynamic landscape that showcases the finest in Japanese horticulture. From vivid tulips and glowing narcissus to the beloved cherry blossoms, a diverse expanse of flowers graces the park throughout all seasons. With walking paths galore, visitors can spend hours wandering and soaking in all the floral beauty to their heart's content. This particular visit was truly a treat as the tulips and narcissus were still in full bloom, while the cherry blossoms were closing out in a breathtaking shower of beauty. Beyond the flowers, there's also plenty of pleasantries that make a casual visit delightful. While picnicking is a popular choice, there's a surprising variety of delicious fresh food and drink available. It's easy to enjoy a meal outdoors with numerous eating areas, food trucks and stalls, which we'll touch on in a moment. For those looking for a fun and active exploration option, the park conveniently features a bike rental shop directly on site. Not only is it easier to experience the entirety of the park via bike, but there are also dedicated bike paths built into the layout. And now for one of the main attractions. These are cochia, or summer cypress. During autumn, they burn crimson red and create a striking and otherworldly explosion of color. Cosmos also reach peak bloom around this time, creating a beautiful contrast below. As peak coloration lasts for a week or so, the first half of October typically ends up being the ideal time to experience them. Though this also naturally and inevitably means it's the most crowded, but some small tips to handle this will be mentioned a bit later. Now, if we fast forward about six months, this same exact hill bursts with a completely different display of beauty. In spring, over five million brilliant blue flowers bloom to blanket the area in a mesmerizing azure spectacle. These are nemophila, and they typically reach peak bloom around mid-April to early May. And while each flower is small and delicate on its own, experiencing over five million of them blooming in an awe-inspiring floral ocean is a sight to behold. The simultaneous harmony of blue flowers, sky and ocean is a one-of-a-kind spectacle worth witnessing. Public transportation from Tokyo proper takes approximately two to three hours. The quickest and most straightforward option is to take the JR Hitachi or Tokiwa Limited Express trains to Katsuta Station. This limited express train is a part of the JR rail system, but requires separate tickets from the normal fare, which can be purchased in advance online or at the stations. From Katsuta Station, a bus line runs to and from the park, with direct bus services operating during peak bloom periods. Alternatively, taxis are usually available near the station and at the park. And now, here are some practical tips that might be helpful to know. While the park is beautiful year-round, the flower bloom periods can be highly variable and fickle. It's impossible to predict exactly when flowers will reach peak bloom, so it's best to check the park's official website, where information is updated regularly. That said, the Nemophila historically peak around late April and the Cochia around mid-October. With this spot's popularity, it's a foregone conclusion that the peak spring and autumn blooms will draw immense crowds. That said, you can certainly mitigate this by timing your visit on weekdays, early morning hours, or on special days where they push the park's opening time forward. Additionally, the park itself is quite spacious. Even on a peak weekend, there's still plenty of space to roam, relax, and enjoy the nature the park has to offer. Though there are some practical effects to consider. I'd allocate some extra time in your schedule to account for public transportation congestion as the wait for buses can certainly build up. Additionally, the JR Limited Express trains that run between Katsuta Station and Tokyo can get fully booked, particularly during rush hours or peak seasons. Although unreserved seat tickets are available at the station, you may have to stand if all seats have been pre-reserved. So I recommend reserving tickets in advance whenever possible. 
Going back to an earlier mention, there's an excellent variety of food and drink that's available to enjoy. While bringing your own food for a picnic isn't a bad idea by any means, I personally prefer taking the opportunity to explore the diverse fare the season has to offer. Typically, there are multiple places with themed offerings to celebrate the flowers. And while some can be a bit eccentric, it's great fun to lean into the seasonal spirit. Lastly, the final tip is to manage your expectations, take a deep breath, and be open to all that the park has to offer. Beyond the logistics, the vastness of the area, and the crowds, my experiences here have consistently been cheerful, wholesome, and fulfilling. The park exudes a family-friendly atmosphere, welcoming visitors of all ages and from all walks of life, all drawn here to enjoy the beauty of nature and their time together. Keep this spirit in mind, and I'm confident you'll have a wonderful visit. As always, wishing you safe travels, and until next time, cheers.